Welcome back, Patriots, to the Bald Brad Show. The White House is quadrupling down on Joe Biden's antics of overshadowing Easter with the Transgender Day of Visibility, and we got the receipts because they are lying to the American public. They're going to say that you're spewing misinformation. No, folks, it is the White House that is lying and spewing misinformation. Hell, I'll go as far as to say disinformation regarding this whole thing. And allegedly, Joe Biden, well, he didn't even know it even happened. He had no clue, no idea, no involvement. Hell, Joe Biden said, I didn't do that. Biden says it wasn't him who designated Easter Sunday as Transgender Day of Visibility and calls Speaker Mike Johnson thoroughly uninformed for his furious response. Well, we have the receipts. And not only do we have the receipts, we're going to hear from Speaker Mike Johnson. We're going to hear from Jackie Heinrich of Fox News. And hell, while we're at it, let's go ahead and hear from Karine Jean-Pierre during yesterday's White House press briefing regarding this whole thing of misinformation. They were totally confused. They were in shock that all this happened. Let's roll it. Uh, just a couple of things. And uh, really um, so surprised by the misinformation that's been out there around this. And I want to be very clear. Every year for the past several years, on March 31st, Trans Transgender Day of Visibility is marked. And as we know, for folks who understand the calendar and how it works, Easter falls on different Sundays, right, every year. And this year, it happened to coincide with trans, uh, Transgender Visibility Day. And so that is the simple fact. That is what has happened. That is where we are. And I do want to say a couple of things, because I think it's important here, uh, as you just stated in your questions, what we've been hearing out there, a lot of misinformation done on purpose. Uh, and as a Christian uh, who celebrates Easter with family, President Biden stands for bringing people together and upholding the dignity and freedoms of every American. Now, well, well, hold on. Time out. Time out. There's just so much garbage here. First of all, you sat there and went after Catholics and Christians during COVID and had people locked up, pastors and service members, and thrown in the brig for holding service in person. You don't bring anybody together. You separate people. Don't give me this garbage. Again, you went after Catholics, Christians, congregation members, hell, everybody during COVID, telling them they couldn't worship in their temple, their synagogues, and their churches. Don't give me that one bit. And stop saying, oh, well, you know, there's so much misinformation out there. You know, it always lands on March 31st. That doesn't mean that you sit there and overshadow the one day that it actually lands on, an Easter Sunday, where a lot of Christians and Catholics, billions of people, celebrate Jesus Christ's resurrection, and you're going to sit there and, and meet together as a group of people in the Oval Office in the White House go, I think it's a good idea that we put forth a proclamation on Twitter, all over the airwaves, do a huge publicity movement for Transgender Day of Visibility, knowing that people are going to be pissed off, knowing that you keep trying to drive a narrative down all our throats, whether it's through media, TV, whatever it is, consistently, you knew this was going to happen, but you sat there because you guys are idiots in the White House and thought this would be a good idea. And now you're going to sit there and say that we're spewing misinformation when you, lady, stand on that podium each and every week and spew your misinformation, disinformation at times. You're the one that lied about the classified documents. You're the one that lied to the press not once, not twice, not three times or four times, five times about the Twitter files and the classified documents saying you knew nothing about it when in fact you did. You got called out for it numerous times, which we covered here on the Wall Ball Brad Show. Don't give me this crap that you sat there and go, oh, there's misinformation. A bunch of BS come from this White House, and I'm tired of it. Sadly, and it's not surprising, right? It is actually unsurprising that politicians are seeking to divide and weaken our country with cruel, hateful, and dishonest rhetoric. It is dishonest what we have heard the past 24 hours. It is untrue what we heard over the weekend. And uh, notice, and by the way, she doesn't give any examples here. I just can't take listening to her all the time, and I know neither can any of you. So let's go somebody who actually gives us some honesty and spews great results in terms of the reporting. And that's our Wonder Woman, Jackie Heinrich of Fox News here, where, question, uh, Speaker Johnson called it outrageous that Easter Sunday was Transgender Day of Visibility. What do you say to Speaker Mike Johnson? Biden said this, quote, he's thoroughly uninformed. Question, how, un how uninformed is he? Like, how is that possible? Biden, I didn't do that. This may be a reference to Transgender Day of Visibility being designated on 3-31 annually starting in 2009. Now. Speaker Mike Johnson called out Joe Biden on Twitter here where he said, uh, is this you, Joey? Is this you, Mr. Uh, President, Mr. Joe Biden? Well, quote, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., 
president of the United States of America by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution of the laws of the United States do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024 as Transgender Day of Visibility. You could have sat there and kept quiet. You could have sat there and looked forward in the calendar. So everybody knows how a calendar works other than Joe Biden, clearly. And maybe had shifted it a day or done whatever. Hell, you could have just, again, went silent, knowing that this was going to happen. Even if you didn't want to move the day, you knew that Easter was going to land on this day because everybody could look forward in the calendar. You decided to do it because you have a narrative to push and your narrative always sides with the progressive left. Well, folks, oh, we're not done. Because like I said, they quadrupled down on this bad boy. It was wild what they were pushing here from the White House just the other day. You have here, the White House doubled down on its backing of Biden's statement. President Biden is right. He did nothing in conflict with the tenets of Easter, which he celebrated yesterday. This comes from spokesman Andrew Bates, who has fumbled so many things for the White House and the Biden administration. It is shocking that he even has a job, but it makes sense when Joe Biden sits there and salivates into his drip train, wears his helmet, walking around the White House so he doesn't bump into walls. You have the same thing happening with Kamala Harris, hell, Anthony Blinken, to John Kirby, to Karine Jean-Pierre, all the way to Andrew Bates. When the head isn't on straight as a leader, neither is anybody else below. And it makes full sense right now. While this knucklehead is saying Joe Biden is right, when Joe Biden continually passed the buck, the blame on anybody and everybody else for his problems that he created. He created this problem. Now he doesn't want to admit it. And who's he probably going to blame? His staffers. In the same way for the classified document scandal, who do you blame? The staffers. In the same way for January 6th footage that's been released to Tucker Carlson and Tucker Carlson saw the time camps from the Democrat Party's handling of it, meaning they viewed it. They didn't want to show anybody it. Oh, who'd they blame? Oh, the staffers. Exactly right. The Democrat Party always blames anybody and everybody else for the problems that they created. The crime problem? Ah, it's Republicans' fault. Oh, illegal immigration? The, the, the massive invasion that's happening at the southern border? Ah, that's Republicans' fault. Oh, the, the gas price is going through the roof? Oh, that's Putin's price hike. Oh, it's sitting there with the inflation going through the roof? Oh, that's Xi Jinping's fault of China. It's everybody and everybody's fault, other than Joe Biden himself, for the very damn thing that he created. He created this problem. He sat there and proclaimed it. He doesn't want to take ownership of it. So now we have the receipts proving him wrong, but we're the ones that are spreading misinformation. We're the ones spreading disinformation all the time. It's bull crap. She stands on that podium. The White House stands on that podium. They put out PR statements that will completely lie and contradict the very same thing they're doing. And we have the receipts to do it and they'll still push it. Nor did he choose the date of March 31st. I just told you the misinformation, disinformation. You saw the receipts right here. Dude, it's from Joe Biden himself. It says Joseph R. Biden Jr. And they're going to gaslight you and tell you it wasn't him. He didn't do it. Holy shit. So nor did he choose the date of March 31st for Church Andrew Day. Yes, you did. Which has been set since 2009. Then why do you have to put forth a proclamation for March 31st, specifically 2024? Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. And Cree Jean-Pierre is going to be, uh, you know, call out a conservative outrage. Oh, there's so much misinformation out there and it's being done on purpose. Really? We're doing it on purpose? Or maybe the fact that we're pissed off that you're constantly trying to sit there and diminish our rights, the days that we actually hold sacred, and you're trying to constantly overshadow and sit there and push aside what we view as sacred with your LGBTQ plus agenda consistently. And by the way, none of us are calling for the Transgender Day of Visibility to be removed. We're saying, why did you sit down at a round table with all your staffers and the president going, hey, we think it's a good idea to put forth a proclamation, make sure we do a whole publicity movement with it, to sit there and do that on Easter. And you all idiots thought it was a good idea in the White House. I'm not stunned by it because you guys have always been idiots in the White House. Whenever you run something, whether it's a local government, state government, hell, the federal government, you run it into the ground, you do a lot of stupid crap, you've done stupid crap since this guy's entered an office, and it's been relentless of the stupid crap that you've been doing. And she's going to say that we're dishonest, you guys. We cover every White House press briefing here. I don't think I need to tell you that she's the dishonest one. This is a lady that lied about the Twitter files. This is a lady that lied about the classified documents. This is a lady that lies to the press each and every week as well to the American people. But we're the dishonest ones, you guys. Oh, we're the dishonest ones. Insane. And President Biden will never abuse his faith for political purposes. <laughs> or for profit. Or for profit. You guys, that was what the whole Robert Hurt case was about that sat there and exposed the fact that this dude gave classified information to his ghostwriter that was all about Afghanistan and classified material for the profit of book sales. That is bullshit. But we're disinformation, you guys. We're misinformation. We're pushing this whole propaganda. Oh, we're so confused in the White House. Why would they say all this? I don't know. Maybe the fact that you lie to us all the time, maybe that's the reason. 
while Trump, on the other hand, has been selling Bibles in a partnership with singer Lee Greenwood, who, God bless the USA, the ex-president plays at his entrance music at all of his rallies. But, you know, don't worry. Uh, Joe Biden's going to sit there and, and, you know, sit there and paint Easter eggs and sniff children and all those other things during the White House. So, you know, at least you have one president, ex-president, with his head on straight, and that's Donald Trump. This is not what this administration is about. This is not what being a leader is about. And this information out there is just, it's bad. And it, it's because to divide us. No, no, you're dividing us, Kareen. You, since day one, have been dividing us. And you sit there and, and call all of us extremists. We're a threat to democracy. We're a threat to the Republic. Us MAGA supporters. That's from the White House. We've all heard you say it. But don't worry. Yeah, oh, we're dividing the nation. We're, we're doing all these things. No, no, no. That's you. The President First Lady Joe Biden kicked off a rainy Easter egg roll on Monday after the weekend's stormy of controversy. Hunter Biden joined his parents on the South Lawn, shaking hands and chatting with people in the drizzling rain. The Bidens focused on traditional activities of the eggs race. Both the President and First Lady took turns blowing the starting whistle, and President Biden helped one of the little girls roll her egg. Well, there's a little bit more to that, but we're not going to cover it, folks. There you have the hypocrisy coming out from the White House. It is freaking taxing and exhausting, but let me know what you think about this one in the comment section below. That is a place where you get to use your free speech, First Amendment right, baby, so much as YouTube allows you to uh, in the comment section below. It does support the channel greatly. It shows the algorithm that you're interacting with the channel and it pushes our videos out there to new viewers who haven't seen our content or our channel. So it helps us grow here and your help and support would be greatly appreciated. Folks, I'll see you next time here on The Ball Brad Show.